What is up? My name is Garrett at Yogur on Twitter, Y-O-O-G-R-T-T. Thank you so much for tuning into the Dimestation YouTube channel. Welcome back to another album review. Today we're talking about the, the biggest fucking rock star in the world right now. Um, post motherfucking Always Tired Malone out with a new third album. Um, full length as fuck. This thing runs almost an hour long. Um, it's a follow-up to Beer Bongs and Bentleys, which was released in, a, I believe, April of 2018. And I believe Stoney was actually a 2016 or 2017 release, 2016 it looks like. And uh, both of those albums were just nonstop, full of just chart-topping hits. The, the albums itself were definitely number one, if not number three, number two. Uh, but regardless, they stayed in the top of streaming, the top of fucking album sales. And I believe if you look at the Hot 100 for albums, I wouldn't be surprised if you see both of his other albums albums also on that list with this and uh you know when you're that big and you're literally the biggest music star globally it's kind of insane to um actually put out like a phenomenal phenomenal album on your third uh outing i sometimes feel like when people get really comfortable um whether it's them getting fed up with the lifestyle um i feel like the music can sometimes take a back seat um do not feel that one bit on this thing this thing is just a crazy ride from start to finish um it's not as in your face but um as i i maybe would want i really want him to just go full experimental and just kind of just fucking go real weird with it but he's definitely staying in his lane but some of the vocal performances as well as just like his ability to like just create a project is unrivaled on this thing i don't think i like stoney a lot but i don't i don't i think this might be in my opinion his best album his best work um but again it is really soon to kind of make a bold ass statement like that but to look at the track listing uh track number one is hollywood's bleeding which is the titular track of this album hollywood's bleeding i don't know if i said that uh track number two is saint tropez uh track number three is enemies featuring the baby four allergic five a thousand bad times six circles seven dive for me featuring future and halsey track number eight is on the road featuring little baby and meek mill track number nine is take what you want featuring uh ozzy osbourne and travis scott track number 10 is i'm gonna be track number 11 is staring at the sun featuring scissor track number 12 sunflower by post malone and sway lee from the spider-man uh into the spider-verse soundtrack track number 13 is internet 14 goodbyes with the young thug 15 myself 16 i know 17 wow um there's a lot of songs i feel like on here that were kind of um, leading up, whether you, whether it was Wow on uh, Christmas Eve of last year or Goodbyes, which kind of leaked months ago, but then it kind of was officially released in July of this year. Um, there's a lot going on uh, with this, and I feel like when you actually look at what is going on on this, whether it is the, the vocal performances, the, the eclectic features, or just the ability to kind of take control of an album with a lot of features like i feel like that's something that should not be understated is how post malone is able to run the show kind of mastermind this whole thing and it really does feel like he's driving the car whether there is 60 passengers or just one it always still feels like his show his thing and whether it's great performances um from halsey who had some of the craziest vocal performances or SZA as well or even ozzy osbourne's weird little throw in on there where you're like what the fuck is this Everybody kind of finds their place, but it still feels like Post Malone is the puppeteer, no matter how good someone is. His just ability to just make fucking music and perform it with heart is something that is just beautiful and is super refreshing. And it's kind of across this whole long ass album, um, again, like 55 minutes in runtime, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but there's so much. Um, I remember, I feel, I feel like two weeks ago, if not like a little bit more, it was actually probably closer to a month ago, we were watching, me and my roommates, we're watching the like Bud Light uh, dive bar tour that he did or show, and that was when he played Circles and like kind of announced that this album was coming throughout the date, and you know, it stuck September 6, 2019, and when you look at the collection of just what this is, um, whether it's like the attempts at rock or the attempts at pop or there's like the hip hop feels and, and rap feels that he throws in there, um, he fucking navigates this masterfully and it's almost coming across like it's too over fucking powered for me because i i had the thought to myself with this ozzy osbourne song which has to be has to be like a 
pre-recorded thing from when Ozzy was like in the 90s or whenever uh, and it just existed and was never re-released and was repurposed and retooled to fit this song that's the only assumption that I can have because there wasn't enough uh, uh, for this to be current Ozzy and uh, you know it, when you hear that song it works I think it's one of the better versions of like a rock take on hip-hop I think it's one of the best blends of those two genres that we've like seen and I think that is definitely where we're going uh, whether or not you just look at like the emo scene that's blowing up in LA or just just like you know acts like little peep etc um you've definitely seen that kind of start to bleed into the mainstream and post malone doing it only only solidifies that more but the geniusness of this album is really just how big it's about to be how much it's about to sell like i think it's on track to do about a half a million sales first week which is fucking nuts like i don't think anyone if you sold half a million copies of your album period i, I would assume you're stoked uh but to do that first week that's that's some shit um but when you look at like his attempts at rock his like pop features or his like big name features this whole album is going to be found across like six different radio station genres where you can have that Ozzy Osbourne playing on a rock station. You can have most of these songs playing on your pop top 40 stations, but then you can also throw in like the Meek Mill Lil Baby track and pretty much Sunflower and any other ones that they already play on hip hop stations. Like this thing is going to have so much fucking radio promotion that it's only going to solidify his take on being kind of the best example of a modern day rock star. And I think that this is the, the seal of approval. This is the statement. This is him bringing this shit on his back and saying fuck y'all like i'm kind of gonna be the greatest ever and i don't think he is the greatest ever he's definitely not one of my favorite artists but when you put out an album that is this easy to listen to and can touch all the age ranges and doesn't feel like it's being kind of devoted to one person like as an adult it doesn't feel like he's talking to children as children it doesn't feel like the the subject matter isn't as uh relevant to them as it is to an adult like i think this is a very easily accessible easy to fucking listen to album and i don't think we've had an album in 2019 from a mainstream act like this to actually do something in this vein where the whole fucking thing is just easy and catchy and you want to listen to it all because every song just kind of continues in this like book like page where you're just flipping through the pages and enjoying the story that's ahead of you and again there's not any real story i think the whole undertone of like what the industry is and what it does and how everyone's just kind of in this void i think that is like the overarching like thematic uh statement that is being made just like what the fuck is this like current state of where we are like hollywood's bleeding the titular track and opening track as well as the title of the album i think touches on that beautifully where it's kind of just like repeating the words where it's just like everyone's gone kind of like what the fuck and like i i appreciate like the the symbolic relevance of that not only in hollywood which is like actually more populated than ever um but it just still feels more hollow than ever and i think that like juxtaposition and those statements are just fucking fantastic and if you do look at the genius uh you know web page that is on screen right now you will see a bunch of these fire marks and i believe these are like the top blank most uh i assume these are like the the rankings i don't know but regardless i've never seen this much fucking traction on an album that's only a week old everything pretty much has like a hundred thousand views just to look at the lyrics and i think genius is a great way to see where the audience is interacting with the artist's project because you do be able to see like what is being looked at what is being studied who is trying to learn what is exactly being said and when you have 234,000 people trying to look at the lyrics to an ozzy osbourne travis scott and post malone song it's kind of random but it makes sense and that shows the engagement that he brings that shows just how fucking big it is and it's it's getting too big and i don't know what a fourth album could possibly look like unless he does go a little bit more experimental like i'm saying someone at work made the joke about country but then when you look back at like his attempt at being on the xxl freshman cover in like 2012 20 no it was like way later like 2015 2016 i don't even know when you look at that though and you you remember vanessa satin being in an interview being like well post malone like why didn't you pick him and she's like well we heard he was going country it's like no this guy just makes fantastic music across all genres whether it's like allergic which plays like a grungy type rock song that has this sweet little drum riff that just keeps going and it, it adds like a little bit of an upbeat feel but then you continue on and it's a lot of pop star ballads but then you you know you have performances like halsey again halsey's fucking 
voice is fucking fantastic on this album. What the fuck? And, you know, you have big hits like Wow. You have big hits like Sunflower. Um, standout tracks for myself. I really fuck with track 16. I know uh, track, you know, the Ozzy Osbourne song is a, a very catchy, catchy song. Um, you know, SZA's performance on Staring at the Sun. I really fuck with Hollywood's Bleeding. Um, but to be honest, you know, I have to be St. Tropas. And that, I think that's just a cool ass, uh, you know, he's, he's flexing a little bit more. There's a lot of ad libs on that track. And I just like the way that it all kind of comes together. If there's any songs that I don't think are as good as the rest, it would be probably Internet, Goodbyes. Um, you know, myself is a little weird sometimes. But all those songs would have been the best song on anybody else's album this year. So this thing is just packed with fucking phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal things. On the road, I do want to shout out Little Baby's Verse isn't like my favorite thing, but Meek Mill does show up and like say some real ass shit on this thing. And I, I really appreciated his performance in verse on this because uh, he just kind of spells it all out. And there's a lot of emotion on his actual, uh, you know, performance. Like I said, Circles, phenomenal single. Uh, one of the best songs, just period. I think the composition of that just is really completed and it doesn't feel like it's dragging on. It ends at the perfect moment. Um, this album is just super fucking easy to listen to. So catchy. Um, it, it came late, but this would have been the album of the summer. There's so many songs on here that are just going to take over the world. Um, there's so many songs in here that could be lead singles that when you have an album that's just compact with all these, it's it's kind of impossible. I do want to say to Baby's verse wasn't my favorite thing in the world. Um, and you know, that's fine. The baby's been having a phenomenal year, but when you have an album like his that was just so goddamn good, I love that thing. Go check out my review for it. Uh, I'm expecting high quality shit, and I don't feel like that verse was really like the most high quality shit, but um, it doesn't detract from the overall album as a whole. Um, it definitely doesn't detract from the stardom that is Post Malone. It definitely doesn't detract from the career that this guy is just fucking destroying right now. Like, he's not destroying his career, he's only fucking blowing it up further, but he's just destroying everybody in the game. Uh, it's hard to even compare him to anybody because it's almost unfair. Like, this man is overpowered. This man needs to get tested for steroids because what the fuck, man? What the actual fuck? But what did you actually think of this album? Let me know in the comment section below. I really am looking forward to all the positive Post Malone comments because they definitely are going to be coming. Uh, I can't see anybody really like hating this album, but I, I do want to see where it ranks between his other projects. Uh, how does this rank up? Is it your favorite, your least favorite? Um, is it too early to tell? Let me know again in the comment section below. Thank you so much for all the support on this channel. Go ahead and subscribe. Uh, you know, you could share this with someone who enjoys music, someone who enjoys rap music, uh, hip hop. I, I review a lot of random shit. So if you go on this channel and something catches your eyes, I do appreciate you uh, stopping by and checking it out. You could go ahead and follow me on Twitter at Yogurt, Y-O-O-G-R-T-T. Uh, Instagram as well. Now rotation on those two platforms as well. As well. Thank you so much. Take care of yourselves. And as all, folks.